Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, yeah, I'm very happy that I can be here today and um, talk to you about um, physical modeling of guitar strings. That's a topic which is very uh, dear to my heart over the last one or two years. And um, I want to show you my guitar model, which I'm using, which I have um, built. And um, it's not going to be the perfect guitar model. It's not going to be the fastest guitar model. But I hope that I can get you interested in uh, physical modeling of uh, guitar strings and, um, and uh, show you what, uh, what we can do with physical modeling. And, um, and I want to do that by in step by step. Um, by I, want to start, I want to start with a very basic model and then I want um, step by step I'm going to refine it and adding more features. So that's the plan for today. Um, so uh, here's a quick overview. I, I I'm going to start with the ideal wave equation. Then I'm going to use uh, finite differences to solve this equation. I'm going to use uh, damping on the strings, stiffness on the guitar strings. Um, I'm also going to talk about the body of the guitar, which of course is very important. Um, if, if time permits, I'm also going to talk about nonlinear aspects of guitar strings. We'll see how far we can get. And then I uh, can give you some hints for further reading if, you're, if you get interested and want to learn more. And yeah, and then we have some time for questions. Um, I should say that um, I'm mostly interested at the moment in simulating a classical guitar. So something like uh, this. this is what I'm trying to simulate. Um, OK, so to start, I want to show you what my model sounds like. And in order to do that, I want to play you a, a, a quite famous song, which um, I have uh, rendered using my model. So um, yeah, let's just start this playing. <laughs> physical modeling, no samples, except the guitar body, which is kind of sampled, which I tell you later. All right, so how, 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 um, how, do, we, do, we get, how do we get to the sound? So, oops. Um, uh, if we have a guitar, and if we look at the guitar string, it has uh, several properties which are important. It has a certain tension. That's um, the force on the string. And um, if I screw this screw here, then the tension of the string is going to get higher and the pitch of the uh, note is getting higher. Uh, the string has a certain mass and has had, it has a certain length, normally 65 centimeters for a classical guitar. And um, this. Um, we can have a linear density, which is a derived uh, property, which is basically which is mass divided by length. So that's the basic properties for a guitar string, which we are going to work with. Um, and to begin with, I want to talk about an ideal guitar string. It's like an abstract version of a guitar string. It vibrates only in one direction. It has no friction, and it is perfectly flexible. So it's like a, like a rubber band. So just you can, that's the first thing we're going to imagine. Um, so if you take this perfect string, this perfect string is, can be described by the famous wave equation. 
The wave equation has been around for several hundred years, so it's very well known. And um, if we apply it to a string, we, we can see that the acceleration of the string is proportional to the curvature. And the coefficient of proportionality has to do with the string parameters, which I showed you before. It's the tension divided by the linear density. Uh, at the bottom, you see a short sketch of a vibrating string. It's an abstract version. <laughs> I hope it's clear what I mean by this sketch. It, on the x-axis, is like the guitar from bridge to um, neck. And the y-axis is uh, the amplitude or the, the position of the string. So that's what this graph is showing. Because I, I'm going to show this graph more often, so just you know, so you know what this graph at the bottom actually means. And in this case, we have a vibrating string which has been plucked in like a uh, triangle shape. Um, OK, so now we have the wave equation. But we have to solve it somehow. And uh, our computer has to understand this. Um, there are many ways to solve the wave equation. Uh, for example, you could use modal analysis, you could use digital waveguides, you could fi use finite differences, and many other methods. Um, I am using finite differences because I, they are very general and um, I know them best. Um, but they are not the fastest. So I just uh, so, you, so you know, I mean, for example, digital, digital waveguides would be faster. Probably. I mean, I haven't tried myself, but they should be faster. Um, OK, final differences uh, means that we approximate the differential equation with a finite difference equation, for example, as shown on the screen. Um, yeah, don't worry too much about it. Um, also, when we do this finite difference approach, we have to discretize the string into small segments. Because the string on the guitar is like uh, continuous, but our computer has only finite, finite memory and finite uh, computation capacity, so we have to so compart the string into small segments. And these segments are distance delta x apart. Um, we have to do the same with the time. We also have to discretize time. I think that's nothing new, because basically it's a sample rate. Sample rate is always saying we have a discretized time, for example, 44,100 kilohertz. OK, um, yeah, this I don't want to show. Um, so if we put everything together in this finite difference method, um, we can show that the following difference equation solves the wave equation. So um, you will see that the y is, um, we have a function of uh, y, which is, this is once again, to let you remember, this is the transversal um, direction of the string, so the amplitude of the string. So this formula says that the amplitude of the string at a certain point and at the time, t plus delta t is given by this formula. formula. So basically, this formula is for the value of the string in the next time step. It takes the old values, in which we already know from the previous time steps, and it calculates a new value for the new time step. So basically, we have a time stepping algorithm in this case. And we can put this into the C++ code quite easily. And um, this formula from the last slide can generate this actually quite yeah, simple C++ code. I mean, it's not big. It's like 10, ten lines, uh, 10 lines of code uh, to solve the wave equation. It's, um, as you can see, it's a for loop. It's going through all the, all the nodes of the string, the discretized nodes. And for each node, it's going to calculate a new value from the old values, which we already know. So this loop, you would call once per time step. And um, yeah, we have also the boundary conditions. We assume the string is perfectly rigid. 
So the boundary conditions will be set to zero. So it doesn't move at the boundaries. So let's have a short recap here. So we started with a wave equation, and which you see above. This is a different di linear differential equation. And um, then we get the code below. OK, um, so now we can simulate the string. We can simulate the motion of the string. But also we need, we, but now we need to plug the string, like virtually. Uh, we do that, so if we have a guitar and plug a string, we, oops, we can see that um, the shape is more or less triangular of this plug. We have two sides here, they form a triangle. And um, so a good first approximation is to use a triangle as an initial plug shape. So this is a code for initialization of a triangle shape, just basic linear interpolation. Um, the next step is um, the question, um, where do we actually take the sound? So we, have, we can plug the string and we can simulate the string, but how do we actually get sound out of this? Well, for a classical guitar, um, the strings are connected at the bridge to the body of the guitar. Therefore, it's a, a very good idea to calculate the force at the bridge. So that's what we, what, what we are going to do. And we can assume, the, and this is yeah, basically showing how to do this. We take Newton's uh, second law at the bridge, and this, that gives us um, the force if we already have the amplitude. OK, mm, so now we have everything we need to actually create sound. Therefore, I'm going to, where's my mouse? I'm going to, um, uh, no, this doesn't work yet. It's a little bit confusing with two screens because I never know where my, where my mouse is. Ah, here it is. Okay, so, so this, is an, this is an application I've written which uh, solves the wave equation. You can uh, use several parameters and it also has a juice keyboard here, as you can see just a little bit different skinning. And um, and uh, the six colors on this keyboard are the six strings of a guitar. So, yeah, let's just, so I, if, I, if, I, if I play a key, then it will generate the sound of the ideal wave equation. So let's see if this works. <laughs> So this is what the ideal wave equation sounds like. It doesn't sound like a guitar, right? <laughs> I mean, not really. It's, it sounds like some 8-bit organ something. I don't know. So what's wrong here? Well, there are several things which are wrong. Um, so if I switch back to my, to my presentation. Um, so the first thing which is wrong is we have no damping. This, at the moment, the sound will go on forever. So the first thing we have to do, we have to add, add damping to this, um, to our sound. Um, here, we, I have uh, started with very basic damping, but which is velocity-based. That's maybe uh, the simplest damping you can imagine. That's what you start out with if you learn mechanics uh, at university. And um, this can, of course, also put we put in C++ code again. It's uh, slightly more complicated than before, but there are a few more terms, but it's not very, it's still only 10 lines of code. Okay, so let's listen to the damped wave equation. 
Well, to do that, I have to change my solver to the equation, wave equation with linear damping. Okay, so what does this sound like? As you can see, the sound is stopping now. It's like uh, fading away. And that's of the because of the damping which we have added to our wave equation. So, um, so that's good. Uh, the, uh, but the problem is it still doesn't really sound like a guitar. Um, So what's the problem here? Um, the problem is that damping in real guitars is not uh, so easy as I just have said. In real guitars, the damping is um, frequency dependent. And my previous model was only uh, giving like lin linear damping with all frequencies damped the same amount. But, um, but um, we can improve on this model by supposing that the damping is actually the change of the curvature. I mean, why not? Um, and uh, if, <laughs> yeah, actually there's no real, yeah, and if we do that, then we ca we're going to realize that the damping is going to get frequency dependent. And that is actually quite important because it changes the sound a lot. So um, let's listen to the frequency dependent model. So I'm changing the wave equation with three. So now I'm changed. I've changed to a model with the new damping. So it's uh, it's, going, it's starting to sound uh, more guitar-like. I mean, so we are definitely going the right direction here. Um, so um, well, what I should say: uh, damping in real guitars is actually more complicated than that. Um, but uh, there have been, but I have not implemented real damping yet in my model. That's something which I want to do in the future. But uh, uh, for the time being, I'm using this damping model. Okay, um, actually what time is it? Yeah, okay. Um, Okay, so um, what more can we do to improve our model? Um, it turns out that in real guitars, there's something called stiffness. Um, stiffness is a resistance of a material to a deformation. Uh, so on this picture here, you can see um, a steel bar. It's very stiff, like bending a steel bar is very hard. You can't do it. On the other hand, uh, rubber bands, they are like very elastic. They're not stiff at all. You can bend them very easily. Um, uh, stiffness in a real string, in a string is, is somewhere between a metal bar and a rubber band. Um, and the vibrations which are caused by this stiffness they are described by the beam theory equation. It's a fourth order differential equation, but it's still in linear. Um, it says that um, we have a um, coefficient of proportiona proportionality, which is uh, stiff, which is the Young's modulus, times the second moment of area, which is I. So the Young's modulus is actually just a value for the stiffness of a material. Materials with high stiffness, they have um, a high Young's modulus value, and materials with low stiffness have a low value. And the I is a geometrical factor. It depends on the shape of a string, which is very long and round, so it's like a cylinder. Um, it, um, it can be interesting maybe to, 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 to listen to this sound, the sound of pure stiffness. 
I want, I want uh, to show you what pure stiffness is going to sound like. Um, and um, in order to do that, I have to load a new parameter set, which is called G metallic. I have to change the gain a little bit. Okay, so pure stiffness sounds like this. Oh, it doesn't sound. Oh, ah, right. I have to change the solver to the stiffness solver. Uh, which one is this? Bar equation. So that's what pure stiffness sounds like. It's very metallic, and that's uh, because uh, the stiffness equation, I think it's done for bars and metal bars, and that's why it sounds uh, very metallic. Um, so, but we actually want to add, we don't want, to, so now we can also um, add this to our guitar model. Um, very simple, we just um, add this extra term here, this stiffness term which I showed you, to our wave equation which we have been using all the time. And then we can once again create C++ code for this. And um, then we have uh, a model for the stiff wave equation. So we have some more terms now because we have like frequency damping term, we have a stiffness term, and, um, but it's still not that much code. Um, okay, so then we can have a listen to the wave equation with stiffness. We have to change the solver the stiff wave equation. Okay, so this is what it sounds like. Hmm, it doesn't sound anything. Ah, okay, I have to, to change the gain again. Hmm, it's not such a very big difference, but it's, I think it's, it's, it's audible because this, um, the stiffness in guitar strings is not really that strong, therefore you don't have this strong metallic sound um, because you don't want this strong metallic sounds. But it's, uh, the sound now is a little bit brighter than before and um, a little more nylon, I, th I think. Okay. Ah, yeah, I forgot about the boundary conditions. We have uh, four boundary conditions now because we have a fourth order wave equation. So we need, f uh, we can set them to zero, to zero again. Yeah, also the play pips. Okay. Um, now, uh, obviously, the guitar body is uh, very important for a guitar sound because the string itself um, is very thin. And therefore, the string itself it does not really, it's not able to, to, uh, to move the air. Therefore, we need the guitar body to move the air. So, um, the string couples to the guitar body as a bridge. So, obvious, obviously, the guitar body has a very great influence on the sound of the guitar. But um, how can we get it into our model? Well, we can, uh, we can assume for the moment that the guitar body is a linear system, the same as our wave equation, which we're using. And if that's true, uh, then we can use convolution in order uh, to simula simulate the body. Uh, we can just um, convolute 
the force at the bridge, which we have been listening to all the time, and convol convoluted with the impulse response of the guitar body. Um, if so, maybe you're wondering what, what does it actually mean, the impulse response of the guitar body? Um, well, the impulse response of a guitar body is the body's response to um, the body's frequency response, and um, we can get this uh, frequency response simply by uh, hitting the bridge with a hammer or something like this. If you do this and record, if you record this, then we are getting the impulse response of the body. Very simplified. I mean. Uh, yes, and, and why is this? Because um, a, a hammer hit, if, if a hammer hit is um, very close to a Dirac pulse, and a Dirac pulse um, is a, a, a short a pulse which is, very, which is very short and very high, and the, um, if we do a Fourier transform of the Dirac pulse, we can see that it contains all frequencies like equally. So it will give us all frequencies of the guitar. So, um, so what we would do, we would actually, so here's the recipe. Uh, we, we hit our guitar with a hammer. We record that sound with a microphone. We adjust it a little bit because our hammer is not a perfect Dirac pulse. We have to take that into account. And then we can convolute this recording with our simulated uh, bridge force. Um, there's one uh, important thing to note. If, if we do this, we actually neglect the interaction between the bridge and um, the string. But it works uh, quite well still. Um, this is a graph which shows um, what such, such a body impulse response can look like. So this is a graph. You see the frequency on the x-axis going from 0 to 22 kilohertz. And, and then you have the amplitude of um, the frequencies. You can, for example, see a very clear node at 110 hertz and 220 hertz. It's like a low frequency node for my guitar. Um, okay, so what uh, what what does this sound like? <coughs> um, so uh, at the moment, I still have loaded the old um, model. Which was which does not have a uh, body, so I want to play it just once again. So this is without any uh, guitar body simulation. Now we can load the guitar body. It's like I said, it's just a rough rough file. Some adjustment here. Okay, so now you can listen to this again. And you can hear that it changed the sound. It's more yeah, more like a real guitar now. It's more realistic. Okay, um, so up to now we have always been using the uh, ideal wave equation. Um, the ideal wave equation uh, is uh, only, it has some shortcomings. There are two problems with the ideal wave equation. Um, firstly, it cannot create pitch glides because the um, the tension on the string is always the same. There's no modulation in tension. What do I mean by pitch glides? Um, if you have a guitar and if you pluck the string very hard, 
you can hear that the sound is a little bit higher in the beginning, and then it goes lower after a while. So beow, beow, something like that. And um, the ideal wave equation, the, the ideal wave equation does not cannot cannot do this. And also, um, uh, in real guitars, it turns out that um, that you, you the string can vibrate also longitudinally, which means it does not only vibrate in the um, transversal direction, which you can see with your bare eyes, but it also vibrates in the um, direction which goes from bridge to neck. So it also vibrates in this direction. And, um, well, Uh, if, if we want, if you want to, to, to listen to these effects, then, then we have to actually uh, throw away the wave equation. I mean, um, we don't have to throw away everything, but we have to throw away this term here, which we have been using up to now. Um, and we have to replace it with something else, which is, with something which is more, which is better at modeling nonlinear effects. Um, well, um, and I have chosen in this case to model the string as a network of springs connect uh, as a network of masses and springs. So it's a network of um, um, point masses which are connected by massless springs. Um, for uh, this um, equation, we can use uh, Hooke's law for these springs. Hooke's law is an equation for springs. And then we can, we can model this um, string. And, um, and then we get actually tension modulation. Then we can have these boing pitch glide effects. We can get this. And, um, and if we do this in two dimensions, then we also can model the, um, the longitudinal uh, vibrations. Okay, um, and there's also another thing which we want to improve on. Mm. We, um, up to now, we always have been using the uh, triangle plug for our plug shape. But in reality, we're going to use a finger and uh, the finger is not going to create an exactly triangular um, shape. So uh, we, can, we can also simulate this. We can uh, simulate how the player grabs the string in the beginning. Then we can, in the next phase, the string slips on the finger. There will be some, um, some damping when this, while the string is slipping on the finger. And then in the next phase, there's free string vibration. Um, well, Unfortunately, this uh, computer here is not able to simulate the nonlinear string in real time because it's, too c it's a 10 year old ne MacBook. It's uh, unfortunately, it cannot do it. Um, so, but um, mm -hmm. but I have uh, recorded it on my computer at home, which is a newer computer, like a, um, which is able to, uh, to solve this. So I'm just going to play an MP3 for this um, nonlinear uh, string. Let's see. Hmm, I think it played it here, or not on the, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure why I did that. Uh, it wasn't. Can try it again. Ah. So um, this is a nonlinear wave equation uh, with also um, better fingering added, like with the finger model added instead of the triangular shape. Um, okay. Yeah, there are, um, this is actually, I'm coming to the end of my talk. 
actually I'm ahead of time, which is uh, uh, interesting. I didn't expect that. Um, so um, there are a few, uh, there are quite a few areas which I need to improve in my model still. I, I need to add better interaction between the bridge and the string. I, I need to add sympathetic strings, which I haven't done yet. I also need to add um, a third uh, dimension for the vib vibration because there are actually two transversal vibrations for the string. Um, I need to add more realistic damping, maybe torsional waves. I'm not sure if I need this, but um, yeah, and maybe an improved uh, model for the finger plucking. Um, so what's the time here? I don't know. There's um, there's one effect which I jumped over before. So should I show it to you? Maybe yeah. Because uh, there's one physical effect which I didn't really show, but which, which also is interesting, I think. Um, because our physical model, um, if if you plug a real guitar, <coughs> it sounds different depending on where you plug it. If you plug it very close to the bridge, then the sound is very uh, crispy. And if you plug it um, closer to the sound hole, it's going to be more mellow. And, um, and that's um, also something with our, which our physical model um, can do. So, um, if, um, so this yellow line is actually the string here. And um, if I click somewhere, then it's going to pluck the string. Uh, wait, I have to. Hmm. At the moment, it doesn't seem to do that, unfortunately. Um, I'm wondering what I'm doing wrong here. Hmm. I am not quite sure what is happening right now, but I can, <coughs> why it doesn't, I mean, why, why it doesn't work right now. But I can play you an MP3, how it sounds if we uh, plug the string in our simulation at different points. So normally, normally my program should be able to do this. Right now it doesn't want to do it. Sorry for that. Um, and um, Yes, and this effect which you're hearing is because of the standing waves on the string. Because if you plug a string at a certain point, then there, c uh, there, is n there cannot be a note at that point. And then, therefore, the harmonics of the string change, depending on where we pluck it. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Okay. Um, yeah. So, if you maybe got interested in, in uh, this topic, and uh, if you want to to, to learn more more about this. There are several resources which I can recommend. 
These are books and papers which I have been reading, which I found very uh, pedagogical, pedagogi pedagogical and uh, very thorough. So the first one is, by, is a book by Stefan Bilbao. It's called Numerical Sound Synthesis. The second one is by Julius O. Smith, which is probably which most of you know, I guess, very famous. It's an internet page um, which does a lot on actually digital, digital waveguides. Then there is a PhD thesis by Hussein Mansour. It's called The Boat String and Its Playability. Uh, don't get confused by the name. It says boat string, like you would think it's a violin or something. But he talks also about, a lot about guitars. Um, so it's also a very interesting read. And then, of course, um, then Jim Woodhouse has also done the two papers on guitar plugs, um, which are also very informative. Or you could uh, ask me if you want. You can write me an email, and then I can uh, help you what, what I know. Um, OK, yeah, I think that's uh, everything I wanted to, uh, to tell you about today. Um, yeah, um, thank you for listening. I hope, I hope you enjoyed what I talked about. Um, yeah. <laughs>
uh, when you talked about modeling the impulse response of the body, you said you had to fix it because it's not, you use like a hammer, which is an, an exact Dirac pole. So mm -hmm. can yes. you elaborate what you meant by fixing it? What did you do? Yes, yes. So, um, so when you, um, when you want to create this uh, impulse, you will have to use a very special hammer. You need to, you need to use an impulse hammer. Uh, it's quite expensive. It costs like 1,000 euros, I think. Yeah, nothing is cheap in this world. <coughs> and uh, this hammer has a uh, built-in sensor. And it can, it can um, record the force which it, ex which it uh, hits the bridge with. And you're going to see this force is not going to be a perfect Dirac force. So then you know the real force which you're actually hitting the bridge with. And then you have to use this force in order to uh, to calculate the real uh, response. That's what you would have to do. And um, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. So uh, okay, another question. You were talking to me Okay, okay, oh, okay. Sorry, sorry for that. Um, uh, sorry, really a simple question. Can, uh, have, can you implement non-linearity on, a, uh, on the, the perfectly stiff model of the string? Mm, uh, the stiff model is also linear. Okay, so it doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Um, yes, the, the equation itself is still linear um, in, in a mathematical sense, even if it's stiff. Uh, that's, uh, that's very good to know because when it's linear, we can uh, use digital waveguides, which we cannot uh, use when uh, it's not linear. I don't know if this answers your question. Maybe. <coughs> So we you were talking about the longitudinal longitudinal uh, um, uh, modes I saw the string. Mm -hmm. So um, I think for for piano they are quite uh, uh, important, uh, but I don't know for the guitar string are they very important uh, or? Uh, um, well, I'm have not. You, have you mm -hmm. tried to, to isolate or, or, or exaggerate them mm -hmm. or so? And uh, are they uh, harmonically related to the, the fundamental of the, to the uh, string? or mm. kind of unrelated like in the piano case? They are unrelated and I think, I think they are not that important actually. But I'm not quite sure. I mean, I didn't really do much experiments on just, I always uh, have been using both the pitch glide and the uh, longitudinal waves at the same time. Okay. I think the pitch glide is actually quite important because you can actually, yeah. you want to, uh, to model the pitch glide because it's, there's a certain something extra which um, the pitch light gives you. But the, longi but the longitudinal waves, I'm not quite sure, actually. Mm. Yeah, 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 no, um, not, no, sorry, not quite sure. Mm. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, very simple question. Uh, maybe you also said that and I just missed it. Um, how many finite elements are you using? And then one short remark uh, to, the, to the question before. Uh, there's a guy in Regensburg, I, I forgot his name, who did a lot of research and he showed that the longitudinal waves are important for electric guitars. Okay. Probably okay. more than acoustic because ah. the mm -hmm. uh, metal strings uh, yeah, have mm -hmm. different... Uh, okay. I forgot the name, mm -hmm. but uh, you will find him. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Um, you were asking about the number of finite elements. Um, it depends on the string, because uh, the bass string has a lower frequency, therefore you need more elements, because the bass frequency is lowest and then you ha can have more frequencies, also more elements, yeah. So for the bass string, it's about 200, about, for the low, low E string, and for the high E string, it's about 65. And um, yeah, that's, 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 that's the number, I mean, so it's more more difficult computationally to simulate the lower strings. Mm. And um, yeah. I've tried to simulate the longitudinal fretboards. <laughs> when it hits a fretboard, yeah, and, uh, yeah it's very yeah, yeah it's very important. I think yes 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 I know what you mean. I mean yes yeah no no not yet not yet. Mm. But uh, definitely, it would be an interesting topic to to check. Like have some interaction. Mm. I think that was our last question. So thank you very much again, Martin. Yeah, very much. Nice. Yeah.
And <coughs> coming up next here in this room, uh, Stefan Stenzel from World of Music uh, talking yeah. about band limited impulse trains yep. in about 10 minutes. <coughs> okay.